Gentlemen, welcome back to the T. Shanley. I've never done this with a mask on. T. Shanley, starting a business, building a brand blog. This one, big number, 252. So today, uh, it's actually really hard to do a vlog and yet with his mask on. I've got a special guest in the house. Um, he's my friend, Ben, who I've known now. How long have we known each other? Seven years, probably, close. From Starbucks? Yeah. I'm a I first met Ben back when I used to go to Starbucks every morning, my old Starbucks, and um, he would always be there, like, before me. He used to get up earlier than I would, and he would always be sitting there, like, working and writing, and um, it turned out that you actually were an entrepreneur as well. Um, and so Ben is actually a landscaper. He has a landscape business, a very successful landscape business. And so. I thought today we were talking, I was like, hey, would you mind coming to the office and sort of talking a little bit to the guys just about sort of your story? Because I think we oftentimes forget, especially being online, that, you know, that, that, that there's more options out there than just being like an online like entrepreneur. And Ben solves a problem, right? He solved a problem years ago um, in terms of like mowing grass. Actually, why don't, why don't you... I always get in trouble because I interrupt people. Why don't you tell everybody sort of your story and what you do and how you got started and, and sort of, you know, tell everybody about your, your journey, <clears throat> Ben. Well, it probably started about <coughs> uh, when I was 10. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. So my parents, you know, I, I wanted to buy baseball cards. So my parents were like, you know, well, if you want to buy baseball cards, you got to go earn Look money there. for it. Okay. So I started mowing my next door neighbor's thing. You're welcome. Started <laughs> mowing my next door neighbor's yard for four dollars and quarters, because I thought the quarter seemed like more money than four dollars. So then from there, I mowed my other neighbor's yard, and then by the time I was probably twelve or thirteen, um, I had a like riding lawnmower. So I got a little trailer for it and started riding around my neighborhood, cutting other people's yards. And then um, at your way, you're, so you're pulling the trailer behind the mower or yeah. no yeah they had little mo little trailers that hook up to riding mowers this was like 25 years ago okay so, um so yeah i'd go around the neighborhood and cut over people's yards and so to make a long story longer i uh went to college uh, and then i decided you had a basketball scholarship yep so i played four years in college uh, on scholarship. And what did you think you wanted to do at, when you went to college? Like, what was it? Was it, I wanted to be an accountant? I wanted to be, did you have something in mind? Not really. Um, you know, my background was business marketing, so I knew I wanted to do something in business. And um, so I started, you know, senior year, like everybody, you started applying for jobs, and they had the job fairs and everything. And so... So you really didn't know what you wanted to do after, during college? Well, I think doing landscaping full time was obviously an option because I enjoyed it and, um, you know, you kind of get comfortable in knowing something that you be you're becoming good at. And so, you know, after talking with different companies and everything, and then obviously when you talk to a company out of college, they're basically offering you like bare bones, you know. And so I was like, well, I can do landscape for full time. Make so, more money than right, they're offering you. Right. So that's basically what I decided to do. By the time I graduated, I already had it set up, ready, you know, to go. So what do you mean? You, you had it set up and ready to well, go. So you know, in college. Yeah. So uh, when basketball season was done, uh, I would come home on the weekends and I would mow all my yards that I already had set up. And then. And how would, much money would you make per yard? It depends, but I mean, back then in college, I mean, summertime, working summer, and then on the weekends, uh, you know, you could probably make over ten thousand dollars just doing that. So, you know, for college, you don't you're on scholarship, so you don't really have that many. But bills. I mean, like per yard, like how much would you like charge like per yard? Um, you know, anywhere from like thirty-five to fifty bucks. Probably. Okay. And then that was just mowing. Yeah. Then there's edging and blowing. And so, okay, so fast forward. Mm -hmm. So you decide, you know what, I'm just going to do this full time because right. you enjoyed being outside. Right. Um, what did you love about landscaping? Being outside, not being in an office for sure. And then also, just as most entrepreneurs are, you get excited about filling a niche or, or, a, or a want okay. or a need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, and plus you're building something, you know. Um, so there was always something different every day. Um, so that was really good. So it started after college, just you, your mower. So, yeah. So actually, my mom, she helped me out the first year. She said, I'll help you for one year until, and that was literally the only time I needed because that year was up I found my first employee so she actually was out there helping me for a year. So she was mowing grass? Yeah. You're were, you were a slave driver to your mom. Yeah. My yeah. mom works for me too. <laughs> well now she still does but she does just the accounting part of it. Okay so, and yeah. so so where do you go from there? Okay so you get employee number one. Yep. How, how old were you at this point? Uh, 23. 23 yeah. and so you had an employee. Yeah. And then since then sort of you, you and, and the, the interesting thing um, one of the things that I love about Ben's story is that he was in business prior to the recession. Yeah. And the recession came and whacked yeah. pretty much everybody. For sure. What happened at that point when the recession hit back in 2000 and what was it, 8? Yeah, so 05 is when I started. 07, we had three crews. Okay. So in two and a so half what's years. So what's a crew? Explain what, it, what a so crew is. So a crew is. is made up of multiple individuals, usually three to four guys, um, and those are the guys that perform the work so that you're allowed to go out and do estimates and sell jobs and stuff like that. So you went from... Just my mom. To, just your mom. To about nine to 12. And so when your mom was helping you, were you still mowing, or were you going out and trying to get more business? Um, by the end of 07, when it was really good, I was kind of um, to the point where I was kind of running the third crew but I could set them up on a job and then I could go out and do a lot of selling the jobs and everything. Okay. So I was almost all the way out of the labor part of it. Okay. And so, so fast forward then. Mm -hmm. You had three crews going into the recession yep. and then what happened? Well, then the recession hit and uh, <laughs> everybody stopped basically building. And then a lot of people cut back. Uh, ironically, we probably, not ironically, I was just saying, Fortunately, is the word, uh, we probably only lost about 20, well, we lost all of our install, commercial and residential. So okay. that really took out, that took out two full crews. Yeah. So now it's me running the full one crew, and then I kept my two best employees. So it's down to three of us. Okay. Luckily, maintenance accounts, we kept about 90% of the maintenance accounts, and okay. that really got us through a good year and a half of the downturn. And so after that, things started to pick back up. Slowly, yeah. Slowly, but, but today now, what does your business look like? Well, right now we have about 23 employees, so we've got about five full crews, and we got like one like crew that just goes around and does punch out stuff. So. And that's just the employee. That, that doesn't um, factor in. We got two people in the office. So overall, we got about 25. And then we also have multiple uh, things we sub out to. So that keeps other companies busy as well. We've got a hardscape company. We sub out all of our hardscapes to okay. and irrigation. So it, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's pretty built up now compared to what it was, you know, 10 years ago. So I love the fact that you took something that you started doing when you were literally 10 years old and, you know, went to college, went the traditional route, but sort of have, have built a very, very successful business from, from you driving, tra driving a, pushing a lawnmower. And then employee one, mom was helping, and then got a second employee and, and sort of have, have scaled. How old are you now? 39. So 39. So basically 29 years you have been you have been doing this mm -hmm. and it started because you just had a passion for not even a passion it was a it was a side hustle right. to buy baseball cards that has parlayed its way into you know a multi-million dollar business annually correct right okay <laughs> so so now i've got a few questions for for you based on other people possibly wanting to be an entrepreneur what is the number one biggest mistake you have made over your <laughs> entrepreneurial journey? Because I think it's not so necessarily about, about being successful and yeah. making right decisions, but it's, it's, the, it's the wrong decisions that are so valuable to learn from. Yeah, uh, that's hard. I think as an entrepreneur, you make multiple mistakes. Um, 
I, th I can probably narrow it down to a few that I don't think one is more important than the other. But the first one is, is not trusting your gut or your instinct. Oh, I love that. Um, I think there was plenty of times where you knew what the right thing to do was and you didn't do it. And you kind of <clears throat> didn't see growth or you didn't see what you considered um, like a quality product mm -hmm. because you didn't make them. And for instance, uh, employees. I think a lot of people are afraid that they can't afford really good employees. And when you're young and you're starting out a company, it's easy to get an employee that you can afford. It's hard to get an employee that you might not think you can afford, but that they're going to be so good that they're going to generate more income than you ever thought they would. And then it just builds on that. So employees, I think, is probably the number one mistake I made at a young age. So, and I, and I think this is a, another great point because when you start a business, regardless of what that business is, you start generating revenue, right? And everybody, every dollar that you spend is a dollar that you, in your head, think, ah, oh, well, if I'm right. paying $50,000 for an employee when I could really get somebody for 30, right. that's $20,000 that I'm keeping when the reality is that by spending that extra 20,000 on that great employee, you now are able to go out and, and generate more revenue or that employee is, is more valuable than that $20,000 discrepancy. And I'll take it a step further. Take that, it a step further, that Ben. That $30,000 employee <laughs> might be actually costing your company $30,000. Because ah. you have to go back and change, you have to go back and fix things, or you can't trust them, and so they don't show up to work for one or two days uh, just because they can't get out of bed, and you can't bill stuff because they don't show up to work. And I think if you hire employees that are tr uh, dependable and trustworthy, they're going and are good at what they do. They're going to bring. They're not only going to pay for themselves, but they're going to allow you to generate more income and to grow your business. And so what is another tip? Somebody wants to start a business. Maybe it is, you know, not online. Yeah. Somebody wants to start because you consider yourself, do you consider yourself a blue collar worker or, or do you consider yourself like, what do you consider what you do? Um, it's, it's interesting. I, I consider myself blue collar, obviously. My salary is white collar, but I still feel like I can, I can see both sides of the fence, which is kind of interesting because I can see where, you know, on the one side, what people tend to look at as important on the blue collar side, but then I can also see where the white collar side's coming for and when they expect a certain quality and they exert, uh, expect a certain service. And so what I think is amazing is there used to be a show, I don't know if it's still on, called Dirty Jobs. Right, yep. or Dirty Jobs, I love that show because Mike Rowe did such an incredible job going and finding these people that were doing these jobs that might not necessarily you would think like, oh, it's super glamorous or, oh, it's super exciting. But when you, with the reality is that these people were like killing it because they were doing something. They found a, a niche that they were servicing that other people might not necessarily be servicing. Right. And so what is a tip that you would give somebody who wants to start a business what is your number one business tip? Let's, let's go, go with that. Because we've heard from other people that do like online entrepreneur things, but I want to know from you what you think your number one business tip would be. Somebody wants to start a business. I don't think I have a number one tip. Have a good, give me a good well, tip. Well, the give problem is you can talk to like Mark Cuban says, don't, don't follow, like don't work in your passion. But then some people say follow your passion. Mm. Like it just really depends on if you find a need in your passion, then I think that's a great thing because you're going to always be excited about it. Doesn't mean it's not hard, though. No, for sure. But, you know, I know I have friends that can't wait till they turn 65 so they can not work for the rest of their lives. And I don't think that way. I think, like, I'm, I can work till 75, 85 if I want to and not worry about it. And, like, I enjoy working. Whereas some people that are in a job that they don't enjoy could probably be very miserable. So Absolutely. I think your quality of life improves if you're working in something you feel passionate about. Um, so, I mean, that, I don't know if that's the number one thing, uh, thing I'd recommend, though. I think it just really depends on the person. I think you make a really great point, though. Um, you know, I mean, being an entrepreneur, um, 
You know, one of the things that's challenging for me is when I go out with friends or hang out with people that are not entrepreneurs, like, like when I see Ben, right, we always have, have, have something in common. Because we both are entrepreneurs, we both like understand and like get it. There's a different, there's a different mentality. But then when you hang out with people or you see people that are, you know, your friends that are amazing people, but they're not necessarily entrepreneurs, they don't understand what you deal with. They don't understand, For you sure. know, the things yeah. that you're going through. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I know a lot of people that are like, they are looking for retirement. Like that is the thing that they're like working towards so that they can do nothing. When for me, and it sounds like for you, we love what we do. And so it's a different mentality and a different mindset. And my wife, Tracy, will always say, she's like, you don't understand what it's like working for other people. A lot of people do this because they have to, yeah. but the minute they don't have to, like, Jack, I'm out, I might find something else to do, I might sit on, on, on the couch, I might, you know, plant flowers for, you know, for a hobby, but right. it's about finding something, because you have a lot, we know a lot of the same people. Well, that's, you bring up a good point, too, like in some of your previous posts, you talk about failure, and you're very open about that. And I agree. I think it's sometimes cheesy when people talk about it, but it, it's the truth. It's like you can't be afraid to fail. And I fail plenty of times. I mean, I don't know how many times I've wasted tens of thousands of dollars on stuff that just didn't pan out. And you know what? That's just you chalked it up. It's like, well, that was, you know, I learned about it and I'm still alive and I'm still kicking it. So that's how you grow. <laughs> still kicking it. <laughs> you still, that's how you grow. And I think that's also a very important thing going into starting your own business or anything like that is you're going to fail. I mean, you can look, you can go and see Shark Tank and you can do all that stuff. You can read all the books. You can prepare gonna, yourself as much yeah, as possible. You're going to fail. And it's just how you rebound from that failure. And hopefully it doesn't sink you and you can learn from it. And then your company is just going to be stronger. But everybody who owns a company has failed at some point. <laughs> Absolutely. So now, Ben, what I would like to do is in the last vlog, there are some business ideas that mm -hmm. people have been dropping on these vlogs. Okay. Um, I want to read the idea okay. and let you, because it's all about being brutally honest. <laughs> like, what do you think? Do you think it's a good idea? Do you think it's a crappy idea? And what is our advice? Okay. You ready to do it? Yeah. All right, cool. All right, Ben, I'm going to read it. You're going you're gonna to listen and then respond. Okay. <laughs> so our friend Galmir Langtigua, sorry for butchering your name, buddy. My glasses are fogging up. He says, hi, Alpha. I've been thinking for a while of doing a monthly subscription box that gives you the essential uh, personal care products. So moisturizers, deodorants, sounds familiar. I like the idea so far, my friend, that are made with natural ingredients. I would offer different scents, different scents uh, that are neither masculine nor feminine, so both men and women could enjoy them. There are more details of this idea, but I'm trying to figure out. Uh, but in a nutshell, that's what I'm thinking. What do you think? What do you think, Ben? And then I'll <laughs> tell what I think. Well, since I'm not in the business, I will say uh, maybe a couple thoughts is. But you're an entrepreneur. Right. I would I would not have scentless just because that shortens. You're, I, I know what you're doing it, so you think you can broaden your appeal, but I think with scents, you can actually sell more overall because you have people like men and women who can buy different scents, and you can have the same product with just a different smell. Um, but I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but I'm not in that industry. So okay, what, what so, okay, so my, I think that's a great point, and you're sort of going towards something that I wanted to say. Okay. So trying to appeal to everybody is a bad idea. The riches are in the niches, as they say. You want to make sure, you know, one of the big mistakes is that, you know, people or entrepreneurs think, oh, I'm going to appeal to everybody. I'm going to be able to sell this to everybody. It's for women. It's for men. The problem with this is you don't know how to sell it then. You're like shooting a shotgun out thinking that you're going to hit your target when the reality is it's better to aim. It's better to have a specific target audience that you're going after. And so trying to make it sort of pleasant and all that is amazing. The fact that you want to do uh, natural products I think is great um, you know the one thing and caveat to that I've talked about this before um, natural in my opinion is a little bit of a scam these days a lot of people are like oh it's natural it's natural it's natural if you have any natural ingredients which the term natural basically de is is defined as anything coming from the earth right so if you've got water in it you can claim that you've got natural ingredients 
when we were developing Tej Hanley, um, we wanted to be as natural as possible, and we asked. We asked our, our chemist. We said, hey, can we make these all natural? He said, well, you could, but you've got to ask yourself, do you want them to be all natural, or do you want them to work? So think about that for a second. All right, there are advantages to using products and ingredients that are not necessarily 100% natural. It's not that they're bad, but you really need to educate yourself on how how natural do you want to be, and is that going to be your big value proposition? Now, certain things like deodorants and things like that, I think there is more awareness nowadays, and people are going more towards that route because people are starting to realize that things like aluminum, you know, talc, might not necessarily be amazing. But I love the idea, uh, but I would definitely not try to be too broad. I would focus a little bit more. What do you think? Yeah. I think you got it. Next idea. So our next question is from our friend Harsha. He says, I'm a 15-year-old guy. I just want to set up a digital marketing agency, website optimizing company, and I really don't have a budget. So I really, really need advice from Aaron to at least start. Thanks in advance. So Ben, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, it just reminds me of when I was young. I don't think you really need a budget. I mean, this is when you want to start a business. You're young. You don't have kids. You don't need to really support yourself yet. Just go out there and learn. Like by the time you're 30, you'll have 15 years of experience. And that's, I mean, I think that's the greatest time to start a business is when you're young. You can figure it out and not even have to, you'll be up and going in 15 years and you'll, you'll be 30. <laughs> exactly. I love it. Um, something I also love is the fact that what you're proposing and what you want to do, you don't need a budget. You know, as long as you've got an internet connection, you can find or get a website template from a place like Theme Forest for literally like 20 bucks. It's all pre-designed. All you do is plug in your stuff and you can have, you know, you get a domain, which is, you know, $10. You pay for a little bit of hosting. So literally for $50, you could have a web presence. And so you really don't need a budget. And then it's just about marketing. You could reach out to companies to say, hey, this is what I do. Let me help you. But here's one thing I would definitely do is, is make sure that your website does not talk about your age. Um, not that being young is, is a bad thing, but when it comes to people spending their money, you kind of want to be like the Wizard of Oz, like behind the scenes, like pulling levers and like doing everything behind the scenes because if they know that you're super young, they might not necessarily trust you. And so it's a good idea to sort of, you know, not let people know that you're 15, but this doesn't mean that you can't start and have an amazingly successful business. Yeah, and I would say don't, you know, you're 15, you don't need to go after those huge jobs to begin with. Uh, you know, it's going to take time. There's very few people that can grow a business in a short amount of time and get on Shark Tank and make millions of dollars. You know, it, don't be frustrated if it takes you 10 years to, you know, to get where you are. I mean, it's going to be a point where you're going to grow slowly, grow slowly, then all of a sudden you're going to catch a break. And with your hard work, you take that break and that just propels you and your company forward. So I yeah. love it. All right, next business ideas from our friend Sadek Azam. He says, start a travel clothing company that focuses on performance clothing, which is environmentally friendly. The marketing will be done by my YouTube channel, wait for it, and my channel will be travel related. All right, so what do you think, Ben? Oh, I don't know. That seems something up your alley. I really don't know. Right now, with not tra much travel going on, it's going to be interesting, but... But eventually that will go for away. For sure. Eventually that will go for away. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. What do you think? What do I think? I think that... I think you got a few things that are sexy in this one, right? I think the fact that you want to do like an apparel performance clothing company. Uh, performance clothing is, is huge, right? Um, with, with more people working from home, with more people being able to rock like athleisure wear, I think this is great. I think travel, that's another like buzzword, right? People are going to want to travel like crazy when this whole mask wearing thing is over. True. And so that yep. is definitely something that you're going to have in your, you know, in your corner. The other thing that I love is the fact that you're going to start a content creation generating machine with the YouTube channel, which is totally free. And so it's very easy for you to do and talk about travel and then work in and integrate travel apparel and sell that. And so it's sort of like a perfect scenario. Um, your most challenging aspect of this is going to be the fulfillment along with the production. Um, because that's, you know, the, the hardest thing with apparel is, is people buy it, they don't like it, or they need a different size, they return it. And so shipping and the manufacturing is going to be your biggest challenge. I don't think selling it is going to be that hard, honestly. What do you think? 
Yeah, I'm, you're the expert. I'm not the expert. I'm, I'm, just, a, you are. I'm just a, a dude with a mask with an opinion. You want, what else? Hold on, you want more? And the last business question comes from our friend Berkram Bagani. He says, hey Aaron, my question is regarding networking. Networking is considered as one of the most important parts of the entrepreneur's, jour entrepreneur's journey. And in the same sense, I want to ask you about your network with people and how did you meet your present business partners, all of them, stay safe. So, so Ben, what do you think? Networking. How important is networking for, for your business? I think networking in any business is very important. Um, yeah, I think it's... Um, why, you is never it, know, oh, why is it important in your business? Um, you know, entrepreneurship is all about building and in business, but you just never know when somebody is going to come into your life that you're going to need help from or you're, they're going to ask for help down the road and that just turns into and blossoms into a relationship which might not produce any monetary value at all but it's a relationship and then also too it's just something that you get a call from somebody that remembers that you're really nice to them 10 years ago and remembers that you're due a specific uh, business and they call you and it's all because you were nice to them or you helped them out on something so networking is very important yeah and I'll take this uh, when I met Antonio Centeno so I used to be of the mindset of I was very protective of what I was doing right I didn't want to share anything I don't want to talk about it I didn't want to meet I felt like everybody was my competition and Antonio back I think it was like seven or eight years ago he was and I, I hated Antonio Centeno when I met him uh, because he was doing the same thing. I'm like, no, I'm like, what a jerk. And uh, he reached out and was like, hey, why don't we meet in California at VidCon? And while we're there, why don't we have a, a, a meetup and, and talk to some other people and invite like other people in our industry to sort of get together and just talk. And I was like, eh, what's going on? Is this guy really for, for, like, for real or is, is he trying to steal something from me? And that one decision to get out of my comfort zone, and that's the other thing, it was very uncomfortable for me to go and meet somebody that I didn't know, that I, you know, I didn't really have any expectations. It was scary for me. And that was one of the best decisions that I ever made. And the reason is because from that point, I wasn't alone. And I think as an entrepreneur, one of the, one of the biggest challenges that you face is it's a lonely road because your family, your friends can only get excited so much. They can only understand and empathize with you so much because they don't understand what you're dealing with. But when I was immersed in, and surrounded by people that got it, that were entrepreneurs, that were in my industry, it's like everything in my life got better. I felt better. I developed some friends that are, you know, long, super long lasting friends, and we can help each other. And so I feel like your network and being willing to sort of extend an olive branch is one of, the, one of the most important things that you can do. In terms of my business partners, um, Rob and Kelly, they reached out to me to do promotions for T. Shanley version one. <laughs> they were the dark days. I did a video actually that we'll link to down below about the dark days of T. Shanley. That sort of explains how we met. Um, my, my business partner, Terry, for Menfluential, uh, the advertising agency, he was a best friend of mine from high school. Um, and uh, let's see, do I have any? Uh, I don't have any other business partners. Antonio. Antonio is a partner in, in Menfluential. Other than that, that's it. Um, everything else is, is uh, my show. Um, but, but yeah, Ben, great job. Thank you. Any, part, any parting words to the potential entrepreneur out there? Um, yeah, I think it's, you know, you're going to go through hard times. And I think you're also going to go through times where, and, and people like you, obviously, who tune into Aaron, see where he is now. But I think a lot of you guys don't realize uh, if you're an entrepreneur, you're going to go through a lot of dark times, a lot of down times. You're going to take it on the chin. And people don't, you know, remember when Aaron and I were, you know, <laughs> struggling during the recession just to keep our businesses afloat. And they just see now where we are now. I think you got to remember if you want the good ending, you're going to have to go through hard times to get there. And you just got to keep going. Don't give up. Uh, it's really cliche, but just, just keep going. You're going to make tons of mistakes, um, but just don't give up. If you really feel passionate about what you're doing, keep going with it because in the end, it's worth it. I love it. Well, that is the perfect place to wrap it up. Gentlemen, if you have a business question, start it with business question and ask it. If you've got a business idea, start it with business idea. Next week, I'll get to more of them. I'll also give you some Tease Hanley updates. Ben? 
As always, gentlemen, we love you more than our double monk strap shoes. And if you dug this, drop me one of these to be like, yo, Alpha, thanks for actually bringing somebody who's smarter <laughs> than you. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.